Last time out with the Star Adventure mount, I attempted to image the North American Nebula. This was mainly to test out the Fuji X-T1, just to see how sensitive it was to hydrogen alpha, and I was really pleased with the results. The only thing I wasn't keen on is the fact that I'd forgotten a number of things to take a good image. Just when you think you've got it all together, then you realise you've forgotten to put the battery in the camera. There's a lot to remember in astrophotography and I'd forgotten, somehow managed to forget the field flattener for the Magres 72. I don't know how I managed to forget that, but I did. And for some reason I, did, I decided not to include my newly purchased Elinance filter by Optolon, which I'm sure would have really helped with the sky glow situation I've got here. Not only is it a Bortle 6 sky here in the suburbs of Ipswich, I'm surrounded by lots of street lights and I'm not sure if the filter is going to help with this or not, but I've got a very beefy gibbous almost full moon rising to the south over there, which is going to kind of show up and ruin the party at some point and create quite a lot of gradient on my image. So it's a little bit of a race against time to get all this set up and try and get something that I'd class as a decent image. Well, I've, I've taken two subs so far, and there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is I can see so much nebulae on a single 90 second sub exposure. It's really exciting to see. Bad news is both the subs I've taken so far, I've had really trailing stars. So there's either something wrong with my polar alignment or the balance. So I'm fairly sure I got my polar alignment okay so I'm just going to recheck the balance on right ascension the axis that rotates to counteract the earth's rotation which on the star adventure mount is this big black dial here so we'll just double check and just see how well it's balancing might try and just drop that down a bit more if I can you know what I'm hoping that's gonna do the trick. That feels like it's balanced a bit better. We're trying 60 seconds now. Well, I can see some nebulae that could be the Cygnus wall. There is still a bit of trailing. So there we have it, zoomed out, zoom in. A bit more than eggy, aren't they? Should we just try lucky imaging it? Let's do 30 second exposures and just see what we can get because at least we won't be smearing the photons across the sensor. I may have to look into a shorter optic for this uh, star tracker, something maybe around 200 millimeters might suit it much better considering I'm not guiding with it. Uh, I'll have to wait and see how well the Optolon Elenance filter the tri-band filter sort of copes with that full moon in the background. <laughs> if it copes with that, then I will worship it, uh, but we'll see in post-processing. And I'll show you the final result in a moment of an almost lucky imaged, hopefully Cygnus wall with a blazing moon in the background. It's gonna be great. Sub number two was okay, it was sharp, but sub three focus had slipped. And so 97 out of the 100 subs were a complete write-off, which means the night was a write-off. So I'm not sure what happened, but I was kind of moving the telescope about, I was kind of manhandling it a little bit. But the thing is though, it wasn't the only thing that went wrong. So I'm kind of questioning sort of using this configuration with the Magres 72 on the Star Adventure. I think, I think there might be too much to go wrong with that. And it's gonna take a lot of work to get a decent image using it this way. So my other concerns were my near Zenith, the camera was nearly hitting the tripod, but I couldn't frame everything I wanted as well in the narrower field of view at that focal length of around 350, 400 mil focal length with the reducer. 
yeah, I'm going to switch to using a vintage lens because these work really nicely on mirrorless cameras and just via the adapter. I've got an M42 to FX adapter that I can use these with. I think I've got that. I need to check that. So, I mean, if not, I'll order one or I'm, I'm even considering getting like the, the Red Cat or the Ascar 230 for this, which would be ideal, really. It's just the money. And I've got these lenses sitting around. This is my Super Tecmo 135, which would be nice and wide. I've got a nice big dew shield to keep the dew off and it's not too heavy. So there won't be too much off axis weight on declination. And I've got this wild card as well, which was my wife's granddad's chin on Japan 200 mil lens. It's not in the best shape. There's a little bit of haze or fungus around the outside of the objective lens. And I did try and sell this a few years ago. It started off at about 18, 20 pounds and kept dropping the price and it didn't sell at eight pounds. So it's currently worth less than eight pounds. So it might be interesting to see what we can do with a lens that's not even worth eight pounds. That might be quite, quite a nice video or a nice aspect of the video. It also might vindicate the lens a little bit if it actually does an okay job. My only concern is it's really heavy and that's a lot of off-axis weight to have on the camera on declination. And the dew shield isn't very long, so I will have to add a dew strap, I think. I mean, I can decide on the night. I think either way, continuing with this setup at the moment, there's just too much to go wrong with it and I'm not gonna get a good image. So I'm gonna wait for another clear night and we'll go back out there again, not feel defeated and we'll try again. Okay, I've waited several nights for a gap in the cloud so I can get back at it. I've decided to use a 200 mil lens and I think that'd be interesting to see how a lens, as I mentioned, that I couldn't sell for eight pounds performs on deep sky objects. Again, we'll be going for the North American Nebula. It should be a lot easier to track with a 200 mil lens. So I'm hoping to get longer subs. I've changed the batteries, so we've got fresh batteries running. I'll just pick pay careful attention to my polar alignment. I've balanced everything and I'm gonna get set up before any clouds appear. Hopefully this is the time where I actually get an image to show you. And I'm gonna get on before the clouds come. <laughs> 